Welcome to Dive into Visual Studio Express 2012 Part 2, Creating and Running a Project. This video supports our books on C++ and C programming, and to learn more about all of our books, videos, and training, you can visit us at www.ditel.com. Now, as part of this video, I assume that you've already gone ahead and downloaded the code examples for whichever book you are using. Uh, when you go to ditel.com and log into our website, that's the only way you'll be able to see the actual links for the code downloads. So you can see here I'm currently logged in, but if you are not logged in, there will be a login link up here, and if you're not registered, there will be a register link as well. So once you've registered for the website and confirmed your account and logged in, you can go to the book's website, or web page rather, on our site. So for example, if I go to the book's menu to C++ and then select C++ 9E, that will bring up the page that I happen to have already had on the screen. But uh, on that page, you can find various information about the book. And if you scroll down here over on the left-hand side, under download code examples, etc., you'll find the link to the code examples zip file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. I'm gonna save it to my local computer. And at this point, I can view my downloads and it shows you things that I've downloaded previously. These are located in my user accounts downloads folder. And if I click this link here, it will take me to that downloads folder. So there's the zip file, and before you can use those examples, you do have to extract the contents of that zip file. Now you may have a uh, special program for reading zip files on your computer. In this uh, specific case, I just have the features that are built into Windows Explorer. If I right click this file and select extract all, I get a dialog that allows me to specify where the examples should be placed. And in our instructions in the books, we assume that you've placed the examples on your C drive in an examples folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. And at this point, it's going to extract the contents onto my C drive in the examples folder. So I will just wait for that to complete there. And as that's happening, let me go ahead and open up Visual Studio Express for desktop. If you've opened it previously, it'll probably show up here in the start menu. If you're on Windows 8, it will show up as an icon on your start screen inside of Windows 8. And you can also access it on Windows 7, whoops, by going to all programs and scrolling down to Microsoft Visual Studio 2012 Express and then selecting VS Express for desktop. So that'll go ahead and open that up. And I uh, am going to show you in this case how to take uh, code from the examples folder and incorporate it into a project inside of Visual Studio. So you can see here it placed the code into a subfolder called code examples. I was actually hoping it would just put my chapter folders directly here, but here's all the different chapter folders that were part of that zip file in this case for C++ how to program, but it could be for any of our C or C++ books. So going back over to Visual Studio, uh, this video will work for any of you who are programming standard C or C++ apps uh, using Visual Studio. The only difference between C and C++ as far as the instructions that I'm going to give you is the names of the files in C++ end with .cpp as opposed to C programs which end with .c. Uh, so that's the only difference in the instructions. Now you can see here on the start page that we have a new project link we also can do the same from the file menu by selecting new project, which I'll do now. And uh, when you bring up the new project dialog, you have uh, several different categories you can choose from. If you're programming in C or C++, you'll want to use the visual C++ category under templates here. And for the purpose of standard C and standard C++, what you're going to want to do is select from the Win32 subcategory Win32 console application. You can specify the name of your project down here and where it's going to be located, and then go ahead and click OK. And uh, in this 
wizard dialog, you're going to want to perform the following steps to set up your project. You'll first click next. In this dialog, you'll make sure that you uncheck pre-compiled header and unchecked security dis development lifecycle checks. Uh, the, the last of those checkboxes there is a Microsoft specific feature that basically um, looks for older functions and capabilities that have various security issues with them. Um, uh, and for the purpose of what we're doing here, we don't need that. Uh, it would be more for a production uh, site or a production app that you're creating. The other thing you want to check off here is empty project and then click finish. And what you're going to get out of that is a place where you can uh, create new files that represent the program that you're working on or that you can use to include files that already exist if you want to test one of our existing applications. So if you wanted to start programming from scratch at this point, over here in the solution folder, you see we have several subfolders. One is called source files. If you right click on that and select add new item, then you'll be presented with a dialog that gives you varieties, uh, a variety of options. There's lots of subcategories over here, but if you're just doing plain old C++, the only two that you'll really care about are the .cpp files and the .h files. And for those of you who may be doing C programming, even you would select .cp, C++ file .cpp, and all you would do down here is change the file name extension by removing the uh, two P's at the end of the file name if you want to create a C program instead of a C++ program. So you can name this file whatever you want, but if it's a C++ program, you name it with .cpp at the end. That's how Microsoft knows that it's a C++ uh, program versus a C program and then can it compile it accordingly. And similarly, if you end it with .c, then it will know it's a C program and will compile it accordingly. So if I just go ahead and click add, that source code file will now be placed into my source files folder and now I just have an empty file in which I can start uh, entering a program uh, for the purpose of testing my own knowledge or uh, solving an exercise for example. Now uh, the other thing that you may want to be able to do or that you will want to be able to do is to run our existing code. So I'm going to right click this and um, uh, remove it from the project and in this case I don't want to save this file so I'm going to completely delete it. And let me show you how you would add an existing program into this project so that you can test the program. So once again you'll right click the source files folder and you'll select add and in this case you'll select existing item. Now you'll want to navigate to where the code is located on your system. So if I scroll down here to my C drive and I go to my examples folder, um, remember when I did at the beginning of this demo the extraction, it happened to place everything into this code examples subfolder of examples. Our instructions in the book, by the way, assume all of these chapter folders inside of code examples are directly in the examples folder. So you, you can either edit the instructions accordingly or just move all of these subfolders back to the folder examples. And in fact, you know what, let me just go ahead and do that. I'm going to cut them right out of this dialog here, go back to examples and paste them in. And I'm just going to overwrite the other examples that I had there. Okay, so going back to what I was talking about here, uh, let's uh, go ahead and add a simple program into the project. So I'm going to go to chapter two, which is where our first simple programs are located. And you can see I have a number of .cpp files here. I'm going to take the one for figure 2.1 so that you can see our naming convention. If it starts with fig, it's an example inside the chapter. If it starts with ex, it's code that appears in the exercises at the ends of the chapters in our how to program books. Uh, our for programmer books don't have exercises. So let me go ahead and select this one.cpp file and hit add. Now you can see the code file here and if I double click it, it will happily open up over here inside of the IDE. If the text is too small for you to read, there's this nice little box down in the left corner here. Let's say I wanted to boost it up to 150%. I can type 150 and hit enter. And now the text is one and a half times larger than it was initially, making it a little bit easier to read on the screen. So you can configure that however you like. 
Uh, but here we have a C++ program and again you can do the same thing with C programs as well. And if you now want to run this, I'm going to run this two different ways for you. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the debug menu and say start debugging. And when I do that, it's going to tell me that I need to build the project. That is going to compile the code and make it into an executable on Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. It tells me down here if there's any errors that occur while I'm compiling the code. And if there were any errors, I'd have to go back and fix them before it'll run. And you may have noticed a black window popped onto the screen and then vanished immediately. The program actually ran to completion. The problem is when you run it with start debugging, which is what I did from the debug menu here, or if you simply press F5, that assumes that you're debugging the code and that you're um, going to set what are known as breakpoints to tell the program to stop executing at a certain point so that you can then tell the program to walk through the code uh, under your own commands using features of the debugger, which is the subject of a separate video. Uh, so if you want to run the program and ensure that you get to see the results, you can go ahead and select start without debugging, at which point it will pop open a window that shows you the results of the program. In this case, welcome to C++. The press any key to continue part is going to be displayed automatically by the IDE. And if I go, for example, and press the space bar, it'll dismiss that window. And now I can go back over to the editor and work on the program again. Now in this case, the program that I was running was a single source file program. Let me go ahead and remove that from the project. And let me just show you how to add a multiple source file program to the project as well. So again, I'm going to right click source files, go to add existing item. And for this one, I'm going to go to chapter three where we have a couple of programs that have more than one source code file in them. So I'm going to go to this last example in chapter three. And you can see there's three source code files uh, for this program. If you simply drag over all of them and click add, it will happily add all of them to your project at once. And the project concept is important because you want to be able to compile all these pieces of the program together to form the final executable. And the project concept in Visual Studio will do that for you automatically. The one thing you want to keep in mind is that each of the programs in C or C++ starts with a main function and you can only have one main function per project in a C or C++ um, uh, project. So when you're working through the examples in our book, if you want to reuse a project for several different examples, you'll have to take out the code that's already in the project. And again, you can do that by right clicking a file and selecting remove or you'll want to go ahead and set up completely new projects on an app by app basis as you work your way through the examples. So uh, just like we did in the first example here, we can say to start this program without debugging. It's going to ask me if I want to build it, which I have to do in order to run it. If you don't want to keep seeing this dialogue, you can just check do not show this dialogue again and then click yes. And from that point forward, it'll always assume that you want to build the program uh, before running it. And there we have our running execution of the particular program that I just loaded up into the project. So uh, that's all you need to know in order to not only create a new project from scratch and put code into it, but also to test our existing examples or anybody else's for that matter by bringing code into a project inside of Visual Studio. And that again will work for both C and C++. The only key difference being that for C programs, we would have file name extensions that end with .c rather than .cpp. If you have any questions after viewing this video, you can feel free to contact us at our email address, via our Facebook page, or via Google Plus using the URLs that you see on the screen.